welcome dear listeners we bring to you the second episode of the fifth season of alumni talkies i am zen and i am ayushi your host for this episode of alumni talkies today we have with us an esteemed alumni mr akash thagi from the batch of 2018 who is currently working as a senior associate at ey a british multinational professional services company they say management is efficiency in climbing the ladder of success and today we have someone with us who has climbed that ladder quite well and that too in a very short span of time mr akash started his professional career in the real estate industry after completing his mba from infrastructure development and management and now he is working with a prestigious it consulting and professional service firm like ey in this episode we shall explore what it takes to build a strong future in mba in itm and how to break into and sail through the world of government consulting so Thank you for joining with us today. It's a great pleasure having you. My pleasure, my honor, definitely. So, moving on, sir. Your career trajectory has been quite fascinating and diverse, showcasing how one can seamlessly transition through industries. So, from being a mechanical engineer to pursuing MBA in IDM and then working in real estate business, and now at a consultant at EY. What was your inspiration or a key moment that defined this path for you? Well, honestly, uh, just like any other kid, uh, any other sincere kid uh, living in a middle class family, even I was admitted to an engineering college to do an engineering. So uh, many a times when this question comes to me that uh, you have been a mechanical engineer and now then you have done an MBA and now you are in government consulting, how does this figure out? And my honest and simple answer to them is like engineer by accident and MBA by choice. Oh, so this is how it is. And when it comes to making a career after MBA, uh, I was placed in Kalpatur Limited after my former summer internship. And I was fortunate enough to have a, received a PPO from Kalpatur Limited. Yeah. Kalpatur is one of those first uh, few real estate companies who have implemented Six Sigma and Kaizen culture, you know, uh, in their organization. Yeah. And while I was doing that in Kalpatur Limited, I found it to be more challenging and it is very easy to experiment with yourself and do something this uh, do some challenging projects at the start of the career rather than doing at the middle of the career or end of the career though i am not in the middle neither yeah. nor in the end of the career and when it comes to ey uh, i am very thankful that ey opportunity came in front of me i still remember the very first interaction i have had with the senior leadership team of ey the whether it was interview rounds or even the very first interaction i had with uh, the managers and directors and partners it was just uh, things falling into place that the opportunity came and i just grabbed it with my both hands and i'm just making the most of it that's all i can Indeed say it is my choice <laughs> we would like to ask you about your scm hrd journey mm-hmm. being a part of one of the very early batches of idm how has your experience been in terms of the curriculum and how do you think it is to utilize uh, to navigate uh, your way ahead in the career well honestly uh, when i took uh, admissions at scm hrd and especially the uh, idm course back then at least uh, it was considered as a backdoor entry to scm hrd to do mba and i guess till some extent it is still recognized as a backdoor entry to do an mba the same actually <laughs> but uh, having said this during that time when i was going through this course or even when i was uh, learning it or you know attending those lectures or uh, guest lectures or doing the or even after completion of, of, of my mba i was not having any idea that how this course will, is going to benefit me in the future but now that i am in working in government consulting and now when i am uh, actually uh, working on certain projects or even coming across certain situations and challenges there are certain deja vu moments i get that oh this is what our professor used to teach us so this is something which is a very good eye opener and i am very glad that the things which we learned like 4 5 years before are finally coming a full circle and now helping assist me in my today's role and it also helped in kalpur to limited also because I had uh, learned a lot under uh, the operations management faculty at SMHRD about six sigma ring and Kaizen, and the same knowledge which I have acquired or the case study which I have gone through were very helpful for me while working at Kalpatur Limited for three years. So yes, so when you are learning it, you are not realizing the potential value of the lessons learned or the skills that you are acquired. But when you go in the field and do the work, that is when you realize that okay, this is what our professors were talking about. 
Correct, sir. So these infield experiences will definitely stay with our audiences. Moving on to the next segment, we'd like to know and learn more about the careers in infrastructure development and management, focusing on government consulting. We collected a few questions from the IDM batch and specifically Sudhir Satuskar has a question for you and he asked, what are the unique challenges of consulting for government projects compared to private sector consulting? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, well, the challenges in government consulting are way different as compared to private consulting. Not that I have worked in many private consulting projects, but if I have to use my, I use my, you know, a time I have spent in Kalpatu Limited since I was more of acting like a in house consultant only, uh, helping out other teams to for process, doing process improvement projects, and then now being a proper in a consulting setup and now helping out clients to you know achieve the project deliverables and not just project deliverables but also helping them uh, take some decisions which are uh, more research driven, more data driven. So, uh, one thing very important about uh, government consulting and the unique challenges, you should have lots of patience when it comes to government consulting. Yes. It's not that easy. It's not that uh, very coming your way. No, no, no. You have to actually wait for your opportunity. You have to make sure that you have gone through each and every aspect of a particular assignment. You have gone through the history. You have gone through all the aspects of that assignment and then pitch your presentation to the client. And then after pitching the presentation to your client, even ask, for his suggestions and it's just it's not just one level it's level after level after level after level so patience is something which should be not just your strongest suit but it, it should be your only suit to wear while going for any uh, government okay. consulting and other than that some basic skill sets are definitely required that yes uh, you should be sincere you should be smart you should be uh, well versed with your uh, research skill you should you should be also good with your data analysis skill and, with, and depending upon then again uh, whichever profile you are applying to then there are certain skill sets which are again applicable for uh, respective profiles. Thank you so much sir for sharing your insights on that. I am sure Siddhesh and uh, the rest of the IDM batch will find your perspective in very, uh, invaluable and helpful. So uh, and sir, sir it's always uh, on that note I will say it's always very intriguing to see how academic principles translate into real world problems. So, mm -hmm. our question is, can you share an example of how you successfully implemented principles of IDM in a government consulting project? Sure, uh, I have many examples actually. Uh, see, one of those things I will definitely tell you, irrespective of whatever subjects you learn here, irrespective of whatever uh, principles you learn at your MBA or irrespective of whatever skill set you learn, if you have learned them sincerely, and whenever you come to, you come across any job, whether it's government or private, it doesn't matter. But you are smart enough to use your skill sets that you have learned in your day-to-day -day life and then make your life easy and not just make your life easy, but make the client's life easy or even your uh, team's life easy. Then uh, you have n number of things. For example, I have learned uh, many softwares. I have learned Minitab here, I have learned Spaces here. I have also learned Microsoft Projects, Primavera. So these were the softwares. This is just the software skills part. I also learned how to do research. I was uh, fortunate enough to have good professors to guide me that how a research should be done. I was fortunate enough uh, to have good professors to understand that how a policy should be implemented, how to understand the different sections of policy, how to understand the different section of legislation. And now that I'm in government consulting and we came across many policies and many uh, legislation and there are many times a certain assignment given to us that uh, keep, please go through it and give us a one pager note. So we know exactly where to look into, where to read. But we cannot just start from the very first sentence of a policy and start reading it and then hope that after four hours I'll make a one page or not. No, I should know that first page will always talk about the preface. So there's yeah. no point reading it. Yeah. Directly go to the crux part of it and make point notes and then submit it to the client. So these are some basic nuances or basic uh, skill sets which you learn when you do your assignments very sincerely when you are in part of your uh, curriculum. Many a times, uh, <clears throat> students used to uh, tend to work, even we used to do it. We tend to form a group of four or five. We divide subjects, the, this four, four subjects you will take care of, this four subjects you will take care of, and then four subjects I will take care of. But while doing so, I'll just still request all the students that at least choosing your subject, choose, this, choose those subjects wisely. Then make sure that 
in future somewhere you will be using those subjects to your benefits yes so this is what i would a simple suggestion would like to give for all these students in future indeed uh, very yes. insightful again sir and i'm surely this would help our listeners so adding on to that what advice would you like to give to some aspiring candidates who want to build a career in government consulting uh, a very simple threefold message or advice which i tend to give every time when i come to some hr in if uh, many a times i get this question and it's very simple first would be do your homework irrespective of how old you are you have to do your homework and when i say do your homework means uh, before going to any uh, presentation we still go through those deck and divide key okay these are the points which we will have to speak and these are the points which we have will have to emphasize and these are the slides we may you know just uh, run through so do your homework make sure and anticipate that what questions can be done second is follow your passion irrespective whether your career is in matlab your career is pa- and passion are both in same field or not it doesn't matter but follow your passion i still do certain things which i love uh, i am an enthusiastic trekker i love video editing i like uh, listening to music i still do so follow your passion and last but not the least and that is the most favorite one don't don't take things for granted irrespective of how much effort you have put in irrespective of how much hard work you you have done there is always one candidate who has done 1% better than you so don't take things for granted there is a cut short competition out there yes sir so this advice is going to encourage our consultants and they will approach their fields with much more sincerity sir so moving on uh, eva is known for shaping exceptional careers and your journey has been a testament to it what role has eva played in your career sir and also how would you sum up your experience with uh, eva oh uh, so uh, role of eva in some of the experiences okay uh, uh, i'll just give you an uh, example so that it will be very easy for me to explain and not find out adjectives in my brain to explain my answer uh, imagine uh, we have gone through for a trip or a trek for that matter we are fortunate enough that after certain portion now we are in front of a beautiful waterfall it's a very good waterfall uh, it's at least 70 80 feet high the water is running very smoothly it's the flow is turbulent there's a lush green uh, you know scenery out there it's a very scenic beauty and whenever you see those waterfall there is always a stone somewhere in middle of the waterfall which is exact point where you go and click pictures right yes. there's Which always a stone very pictures ha huh, very there is always a place there's always a rock solid stone where in front of those waterfall and you go there you stand on those you know uh, whether guys and girls they go they stand on those solid rock they click pictures they make reels so the rock solid stone is eva and the guy who's clicking picture is me so you, eva has been there for me and i'm just fortunate that they have been there for me so this example will surely stay with our audiences first interaction of yours with the IGM batch you had advised us to always be on our toes keeping yes. that in our mind let's move on to our final round we have a quick rapid fire segment okay the alumni reacts in mm-hmm. this you will have to say the first thing that comes to your mind to the questions that we ask sure so shall we start sure sure yes sir mm-hmm. two words of advice for the current students be smart okay favorite thing about SCM HRD friends and the relationships i've made here favorite hangout spot on the campus many uh, but if i have to pick one it would be my sfc room perfect okay. now called in here <laughs> <laughs> anything that still makes you feel less nostalgic about scm chadi everything <laughs> one word to describe your mba journey at scm chadi adrenaline okay your go to place on campus to relax after a long day actually it is outside campus that is blue ridge mm-hmm. uh, many would like a skill that you have gained at ey that every mba student must develop research skills definitely if not consulting what other career path would you have chosen uh maybe i would have followed my family business so photographer video events and all great mm-hmm. and a misconception about government consulting which you would like to clear uh the offices are very aesthetic from outside only <laughs> Best piece of advice you've ever received from a mentor? Uh, irrespective of how many organizations you may change in your career, always leave that organization on a good note. Correct. Uh, 
and describe your dream vacation in three words. I just need like money and I do not need anyone to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Uh, most adventurous? Um, okay, uh, so there is a highest and longest sky cycling track which is currently uh, of not just India or Asia, I'm talking about the world, which is currently at Bilim, Giri Bilim, Himachal Pradesh. And I've done that. Wow. <laughs> okay, now the last question. Dogs are cat. Who would you pick up as your work from home buddy? Dogs, but my mom will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> she so, doesn't like me either. <laughs> so that was the final segment, sir. Okay. Mr. Atash, thank you so much for joining us mm -hmm. and sharing your incredible insights. It's been such a fruitful discussion. From navigating challenges in government consulting to understanding how to build a strong career after an MBA in IDM. I'm sure our listeners will also take away valuable lessons from your experiences and perspectives. Mm -hmm. And before we wrap up, we would like to ask you for your two cents for the students of SMHRD. Any advice or words of wisdom you would like to share with those aspiring to make a mark in this industry, sir? Uh, see, when it comes to do's and don'ts, I guess. All those students have well equipped packages here. Alumni will obviously come at every given opportunity and try to share their experiences to them, and they will get n number of you know uh, options or you know n number of things to learn. One realistic suggestion I will give for all the students of SMHRD: keep your ambitions high, but do not keep your expectations. And only smart guys can understand it. So this is truly inspiring. It's an absolute pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. For our listeners, make sure you stay tuned for more episodes of Alumni Talkies. Thank you. Until we see you next time.